Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorem. As usual, my biased perspective, my favorite theorems. Or actually, to be completely precise today, and not really a theorem, but rather um, on the philosophy of generating functions. That's what I want to explain today, okay? So not really a theorem itself, but kind of a very, very powerful way to think about certain problems. And um, this is a little bit silly and it took me a long time to understand it um, because in mathematics you usually used to, oh, here's theorem, here's definition, here's whatever. And people rarely tell you about philosophies, but this is really a powerful one. It's a very easy one and I hope you like it uh, because I like it a lot. It's, it's a really powerful way of thinking about problems and it's a back as we will see. It's a really nice little back. Okay, so let's start with something easy. So let's assume we have, well, we have certain functions, g1, which is just this one. It's a function in z, and I don't care what z is, and g bias, I, I, I don't care about conversions or whatever, what, I don't care. It's a, it's a type of formal symbol. And I would like to treat it as a, what is called a formal power series. So it's just one over one minus z. And if I would tailor expand that completely naively, writing it on the other side uh, of the equation, basically. Um, we we'll just tailor expand it completely naively. Don't worry about conversions or whatever. We want to do algebra right? or some counting things. Uh, analysis will come in later because as we will see, basically analysis comes in because this is a function secretly, let's say a real function or a complex function or whatever. And I don't want to use that. Instead, I'm just writing it, uh, I'm just expanding it. Um, I, I collect basically terms in front of my z's. So this is a power series. So you have a, you have a z, z to the zero, which is of course just one. Uh, you have a z, you have a z squared, you have a z cubed, you have a z to the fourth, you have a z to the fifth. And what I really care about are the coefficients in front of them. So I have an infinite number of coefficients just hidden in this little tiny expression here. So this little tiny expression has an infinite number, uh, number, infinite number of coefficients of coefs, right? Okay, um, so that's very nice. A priori, that's not, nothing very special. I could also, could have chosen this one. In this case, this is one over uh, one over one minus z squared. And I do the same trick. I look at the coefficients. I get one, I get zero, I get one, I get zero, I get one, I get zero. Uh, you get the pattern. And this is not magic. I just tailor expand it. I could do the same thing with, well, say this function. I tailor expand, I get one, I get one, I get zero. It, it actually is a polynomial, so it, it stops at one. I could also play the same game um, with, let's say, this function. Do the same trick. I get one, two, three, four, five, six. And what is so nice about it is, well, completely silly observation, but that's what it is. That everything you see here are natural numbers, right? One, zero, three, five, whatever. And whenever you see natural numbers, and this is a different kind of philosophy, related to the one I'm going to talk about today, but um, whenever you see natural numbers, you're counting something. They're also called counting numbers for a really, really good reason, right? You're counting something. And the kind of the main question is, if you see those functions, then, well, what are you counting? So what are we counting here? So one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, zero, and so on. So let's have a look at the last one, the blue one. So, um, Let's do a very easy experiment. You have two, two colors of balls and you have an infinite uh, amount of them. You have a blue ball and you have a red ball. So a blue, a blue one and a red one. And you have infinitely many of them. And you ask yourself, okay, how many ways are there, typical counting problem, uh, to draw, let's say, no balls from my infinite stack? Well, <laughs> there's only one way you just you just don't choose any, right? So you get one way of, of, of uh, 
selecting no balls. One. How many ways are there to pick out one ball? Well, you can either choose a, you can either choose a red one or a blue one. Two or two. How many ways are there to, uh, to, to, to pull out two balls? Well, you can have red, red, or red, blue, or blue, blue. So there are three ways and so on. Right? How many, how many ways are there to pull out three balls? Well, there are four ways. And how many ways are there to pull out five balls? Well, there are uh, four balls, there will be five ways. It's easy to understand. But what is more important here is, oh, we have seen those numbers before. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So actually, secretly, my blue function, T4, counts the number of possibilities. Just in, in, a, in a ridiculous, efficient way, just the function itself, you expand it, you look at the coefficient in front of Z to the K, and that's the number of, the number of ways of selecting K balls out of, out of my stack of two columns. Two colors, right? Uh, two colors, balls with two colors. It's just a ridiculously efficient way of saying that. You just write down this very uh, simple looking function. And that's it. That's it. And everything is encoded in that simple looking function. It also answers our question. Um, so, what kind of numbers we have seen here, right? Because it's exactly this counting problem. So, this function generates this counting problem. That's an interesting observation. Maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe other functions are different or whatever. Certainly they should count something different because you get different numbers, but maybe you don't really count anything. Well, the answer is you do count something. So uh, remember here I had my green, my blue, my dark green and my dark blue function. So my green function, and it was the one with only ones and it also counts something. It's just a very, very simple counting. You count the number of ways to pull out K balls from just uh, a stack of balls with one color. So you can put out nothing, you can put out a red ball because you only have a red ball, you can pull out two red balls because you only have red balls, and so on. So one, 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 one. And again, the coefficient in front of Z to the K after Taylor expanding, right? You Taylor expand, you look at the coefficient in front of Z to the K, and that's exactly the number of ways to, to, to solve this counting problem. So the, the answer to your counting problem. My function G2, this was the one with uh, alternating, so one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. It counts the number of ways to select an even number of balls, right? So if you want to select an even number of balls, how many ways are there to select, well, one ball? There are no ways because you want to select an even number of balls. How many ways are there to select two balls? Well, you still have only red balls. So that's exactly one way. So it's one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And again, extremely efficiently encoded in this little function, just in this little, really tiny expression. Um, the, the dark green function, that's a funny one. It was a one, one, and a lot of zeros. It counts a way to select at most one ball, right? As soon as you're one, at most one ball, as soon as you, you want to select two, that's not allowed. So it, it, it breaks down at one point, you only get zeros. So zero, 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 from one point onwards. Efficiently encoded in the function itself. And we have seen the last one is the number of ways to count um, to, to, to select K balls. Same trick, you look at the expensive function, you look at the coefficient on Z to the K, and that's your number of ways. And I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculously efficient way of encoding those counting problems, just in those little functions. Just Taylor expanding them. It's ridiculously efficient. And that's exactly the philosophy. So generating functions, so those things are called generating functions, because they generate certain counting problems, basically. And uh, I just explained everything I, I needed to explain about them. They're just functions and you tailor expand and you look for, in, uh, for the coefficient in front, of, uh, in front of a certain power. You could have multiple, you could do this in multiple variables. You could have an X, Y, Z, look at the corresponding power or whatever. Um, just, just the main idea is to encode an infinite number of solutions 
counting problems in a function. Or as Polyaf formulated it, a generating function is a back. Right? So that's what he says, it's a back. And instead of carrying those infinitely many little, very strange, whatever objects, you just have to carry the back. So the, the, the generative function is the back that, that holds all the answers to at once to, to those counting problems. And that turned out to be such a ridiculously uh, efficient strategy in mathematics that a lot of counting problems have nice generative functions. I don't say it's trivial to find them for other counting problems than, than the one I showed you. But as soon as you have a count, uh, generating function, that's awesome. You don't need to do anything anymore. Just expand it or let the computer program expand it. It's really, really good. You just have a very, very short and very efficient expression for, for uh, a lot of, for a counting problem. So here's a very famous example of a counting problem. The rabbit counting problem um, originally asked uh, a, a long time ago. So it's not called Fibonacci numbers. It's just this, this rabbit. So you have, <laughs> you have, we have two rabbits. And they need one month to get, so I'm counting months here. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. And they get need one month to get um, sexual mature. So in the first month, nothing happens. You still have the first pair of rabbits. And then they're rabbits, so they multiply. <laughs> so the first pair of rabbits spits out the second pair of rabbits. Um, and from there onwards, the first pair of rabbits always spits out a new pair of rabbits. Okay. But the second pair, needs one more month to get sexual mature. So from here onwards, it will spit out a new pair of rabbits every time. And in each step you get more and more rabbits, right? And each one of them spits out more and more rabbits. So um, the question, the counting question we'd like to solve is after, uh, if you're in months, well, let's say five, how many pairs of rabbits do you actually have? And in this case, they are just listed here. So you have eight pairs of rabbits. But of course, you would like to solve this in for a general month, for months one, one thousand, and you can write out a generating function. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's this one: one over z, uh, one over one minus z minus z squared. And if you expand that, you see exactly one, 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 two, two, three, three, five, five, eight. Eight, and you also know the next one because I've, I've given it to you. The next one would be 30. And yes, of course, you recognize them as Fibonacci numbers, but this is a very, very efficient way of encoding Fibonacci numbers, generating functions. Very powerful idea. That's why I like it so much. So let us finish with more ball, ball counting to convince you that generating functions are really powerful. Maybe my ball counting examples were a little bit too easy for you. You could have solved them without a generating function. Um, Still, they were really efficiently encoded, but you could have solved them without, right? D drawing the K balls out of a, uh, if you just have one color of ball to choose, that, that's an easy problem to solve. But what about, for example, selecting 100 balls out of four colors? I have a red color somewhere here, I have a blue color somewhere here, I have a yellow color somewhere here. And I have a green color somewhere here. So how many ways are there to set like 100 balls, uh, 100 balls out, out of four colors? Ooh, I can't do that calculation in my head, but I know how the generating function looks like. So pretty simple. You have this generating function for red. You have the same as we've seen before for blue. You have the same as we've seen before for yellow. You have the same, the same as we've seen before for green. You just multiply them, you tailor expand, you look at the coefficient of z to the 100. Uh, z to the 100, yes. I mean, this is just amazing. Let me show you a few more ball counting problems and generating functions. So here's again the same problem, right? So you have an infinite number of balls that you can see here. Uh, let's say red, blue, and yellow balls. I can vary the number of balls very easily. We'll do that. I can vary the number of Balls I want to select very easily. Let's stick with 163. It will always be the coefficient of z to the 163. And it was exactly the counting problem from before. And this little code here spits out exactly the number of answers without 
don't doing much because it's super easy for a computer. It just expands this thing, looks at the coefficient. It's 9,453. Um, but you can vary the problem. So let's say you are not interested in just counting, just just pulling out unrestricted number of um, yellow balls. But the yellow balls should be a multiple of three. Oh, and here's the generating function. Okay, that's what it looks like. You, you still have the same for red and blue, red, blue, but because you want it to be a multiple of three, um, so before I've shown you this, this multiple of two, which was even, it was one over one minus z squared. It's not hard to see what that for a multiple of three, you would have one uh, over one minus z cubed. And you just multiply it out and you see it. So you have fewer options, of course, than just doing it unrestricted. 9,000, but um, I mean, I couldn't have guessed that number not, or not easily calculated with a generating function is super easy. And the generating function is encoding this, this really strange counting problem. You can vary that. What is if you want to count an odd number of red balls? Well, here's a solution for odd numbers and you get something. Um, what if you want to put an even number of blue balls? Here you go. Or with more balls and you want those purple balls to be even in the most 10. I mean, this is just, this is just e extremely amazing, extremely simple and it's an extremely efficient way of counting, uh, uh, encoding counting problems. Not just balls, of course. Balls are just the easiest example. Okay, and that's it for today. So um, generating functions, the idea to encode um, counting problems in functions extremely powerful, extremely efficient, this back Paulia is talking about, right? It's, and, and as soon as you understand that idea, and as soon as you have the count, accounting function, uh, the generating function, you can now apply methods of analysis, differentiation, integration, something like that, to counting problem. I, I think this is pretty amazing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you like uh, generating functions as much as I do. And I hope you also, I also hope to see you next time.